It can only be attributable to human error. Where will we go next? It's a phantom from another time. No one That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. My name is Alex Daikaiju. To my left, Jasmine with, across from us, Eli Watson. And you're listening to Cryptid, Cryptid Campfire. Campfire. Yes, sir. And this is the final ascension to Bigfoot Mountain. We're, we're so close to the top now, dude. I, I can, can feel, almost see it. I, can, I, I can't see it. Why would you almost see it? Where it's the, literally right, right there. there. There's a big tree in my way. But we <sighs> did it. Eight weeks camping on Bigfoot Mountain, talking about the Bigfoot. All the research. Never again. <laughs> After this, no more Bigfoot. That's it. He's done. It's been quite the journey. <laughs> I would say but we, so. But we, we did it together, you guys. The three of us, we made it. Made it to the top. We, we're almost there. We, we were so there. young and hopeful in the start of Bigfoot Mountain. <laughs> We've gone through some trials, some tribulations. Some trauma. Some trauma. Some forest fires. Volcano but, explosions. Yeah. Yeah. But it what is this? What, who who that? Why who is, is this? there is there someone coming up on the other side of the hill? Who who is there that is. strange who? fellow? Who, who goes away? there? Hey! hey! Whoa! Who are yeah, you? Just in time. I just made a fresh batch of coffee. Ooh. Get on up here. Hold on, I'm confused. Where did you come from, and who are you? I came up the other side. My name's Stefan. Uh, hi, Stefan. Hey, 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 hey. Come join me. This All right. Stranger, I um, don't even ooh. know. Actually, we've we've kind of got a thing going on here ourselves. We, we, no, 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 no. Come on. But like, come have some coffee with me. Come sit with me. How about, I'm going to have here, coffee. I got an idea. Him. How about you bring the coffee over to the campfire? I got a whole thing going over there. I'm a, going over there. I got an entire campfire. I'm going there. there. I've uh, been here two weeks. Here, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'm moving the campfire now. Okay. Oh, it's kind of hot. I, 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 okay. And, oh, we're set. Perfect. Okay, so we are at our campfire now and it seems that we have a uh, another person here with us now he says yeah. his name is stefan uh that's correct have you seen anything strange while you've been up here did you um i have not actually I'm, i've just been pretty lonely oh damn well do well, you have any interest in bigfoot because that's kind of why we're here i love bigfoot <laughs> whoa hey all fantastic. right fantastic cool cool what are we talking about today though uh, I think today we're talking about Bigfoot vs. UFOs. Whoa. Yeah. Guys, it's going to get a little bit weird today. Like, we are going into some strange territory. We're yeah. talking about the connection of Bigfoot to UFOs, we've, other dimensions. Yeah, we've been traveling on foot for eight weeks. The atmosphere up here is virtually no air. Our brain cells are drying up as we speak, so it's going to get a little loopy. That's what the caffeine's for. Oh, whoa! There's a fish in the percolator. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we want to set off with them Bigfoot and them UFOs? All right, guys. So, talking about cryptids, I have a little bit of a fact here. So, it is reported that at least 20% of Bigfoot sightings coincide with UFO events. So, that is why we're making this connection. It's not completely random. It's more common than you might think. Mm -hmm. Um, so. In 1973, Pennsylvanian UFO researcher Stan Gordon said that he noticed this increase in sightings of Sasquatches entering and exiting extraterrestrial vessels. Uh, so he actually set up a UFO hotline. Uh, it still Ooh. runs to this day. Uh, I actually did call the phone number. How'd it go? It rang once, and then I hung up because uh. I was afraid. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, the number is 724-838-7768. So if you would like to call Are you calling and it now? see how no, that goes. No, I was going to... I found the website. Oh, uh, there's no reception. Huh? Uh, well, I, I took a screenshot. But uh. Uh, so Jasmine said the web, the, the number. So mm -hmm. give that a call. If they ask who you are, tell them Crypto Campfire sent you. But I think <laughs> this is what Stan Gordon looks like. And it's my favorite picture ever. Of a man awkwardly standing against a tree that's been photoshopped out. 
And there's a, a CGI Bigfoot next to him with it's a half true. cropped UFO. So definitely give him a call. Well, I called. <laughs> yeah, it's standing next to a giant egg. When I called it, I assumed and had hoped that it would have been like a recording. Like you call and it's like, you've reached the whatever hotline. The Bigfoot UFO the hotline. UFO you see a Bigfoot? Tell yeah. us about it. But when it started to ring, I was like, oh, God, is someone going to answer? And I didn't Hi, want... you've reached. This is Richard speaking. How can I help you? <laughs> I didn't want anyone to pick up. Uh, but that is a thing. So that's where we're going today. We've got lots of questions. Is Bigfoot an alien? Does Bigfoot fight aliens? Is there other dimensions that Bigfoot travels from? Ooh. That's the kind of stuff that you can look forward to over the next probably hour or so. Yeah, so I dig know. in. So... I'm going right back to Ape Canyon, guys. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, we got Fred Beck, the man in charge, you know? Okay. You know him? We're back to back? Yeah. Well, he and his son, who who I erroneously did not obtain his name, uh, they wrote a little booklet together. Okay. Uh, and they said some interesting things about the Ape Canyon incident. Had some choice words about Bigfoot? Yeah, they did. Interesting words. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Fred Beck... Claims to have had numerous psychic experiences throughout his life, many involving supernatural peoples. Mm -hmm. He says that they found the mine that they were mining at in 1924 through the guidance from two spiritual beings, one being a buckskin clad Indian and the other was a woman which they named the mine after Vander White. Okay. So, and this is where it gets weird because he says that the ape men that they were attacked by were not entirely of this world. He says he was conscious of the fact that they were dealing with supernatural beings and supposedly other me other members of the crew were under the same impression. And like I mentioned very briefly, like two episodes ago, that they shot one. Right. They shot it, one of the apes and they saw it fall like 300 feet into this chasm below. Whoa. They were, they were never able to find the body. Mm. And he claims that's because they are made of this substance that is both physical and psychical. That's what he said. Okay. Psychical. Psychical. Uh, and sometimes they are more, one more than the other depending on the level of materialization. Okay. Which is why the bodies have never been found. Because they never materialize. Be they go Cause... back to the... Yep. They're... Once they hit the problem of having too many bullets in them, they just go back to their own dimension. Basically. Ooh. But I don't know. Is it instantaneous? Or just like his, his leg and his arm appear first. It's and like it's a slow process. <laughs> Wouldn't that be... You're just walking in the woods and you see a Sasquatch head floating around. <laughs> and he's just like... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and it just it disappears. Good grief. So that was kind of a story regarding the alternate dimension type thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I was A dimensional into. window follower, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it. Stefan, say something. <laughs> something. <laughs> so we got Bigfoot's, uh, Frank Beck, you said the guy was? Fred Beck. Fred Beck. <laughs> Frank. Frank Beck. Fred, Frank Beck and his son Beck Beck. <laughs> <laughs> they shot some Bigfoots. <coughs> so I guess one of the questions we asked is, is Bigfoot an alien? I think No. Whoa, why? Uh, I just, I believe that the Bigfoots and the UFOs are two completely different things. I feel like the Bigfoot's like a real Earth-bound creature that was born on Earth. Same. Uh, you know, it's just a type of, uh, a, what do you say, ape or a gorilla, you know, simian. Uh, while UFOs are probably either from space or from dimension. So I don't think there's yeah. any real crossover except that sometimes maybe... They just have to be in the same area. Yeah. What does new guy think? Well, yeah. What about you? New you guy? don't. You don't think that uh, another dimension has another Earth, and maybe they only have big feet. Big foot. Was it big feet? Big feet. Plural. Big feet. Just, I don't you know. think there, there's a world of Bigfoots that own the world, and the humans are the ones running around, and the Bigfoots are thinking hey, who that knows? they're like there's tiny feet out there. Maybe the humans. They're are small the foot. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. What if we're the cryptids the whole time? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> uh, so we're on this topic of alternate dimensions. It seems that that, that, that is where we've started with mm. this. So um, the at the 2015 Greater New England UFO Conference, uh, renowned Bigfoot hunter Bill Brock referenced a recent NASA announcement that magnetic portals may be real. 
Oh. Uh, he said he came to believe in them when he traveled to West Virginia to study the Mothman case. Mm-hmm. So I read the NASA article. It's it's actually pretty short. It's pretty brief. Um, not a ton of information because obviously this is a very complex you know story. Mm-hmm. But the article states that a favorite theme of science fiction is quote the portal, an extraordinary opening in space or time that connects travelers to distant realms. So a good portal is a shortcut, a guide, a door into the unknown. If only they actually existed. Well, it turns out that they do, sort of, and a NASA-funded researcher at the University of Iowa has figured out how to find them. Uh, He says, we call them X-points or electron diffusion regions, explains plasma physicist Jack Scudder of the University of (laughs) Iowa. Um, This is a lot of information. I know. There are places on Earth, uh, there are places where the magnetic field of Earth connects to the magnetic field of the sun, creating an uninterrupted path leading from our own planet to the sun's atmosphere 93 million miles away. So... Sci- the science exists that these kinds of portals, black holes, and whatever could actually exist. So they just dump you on the sun. So does Big- <laughs> <laughs> so does Bigfoot use these portals to travel? You know, like Alex, you've already said you don't think Bigfoot is an alien, mm-hmm. but this is kind of what this episode is about: is the possibility that maybe he is. Yeah. But you also said that you don't think he is, and that he just happens to be in the area when things are happening. There's mm-hmm. also another point. Talking about that. Uh, so, scroll, 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 Dude, scroll. Dude, what if we're all living in a glitch in the Matrix? We're living in the Matrix. A glitch in the Matrix happens. A Sasquatch gets stuck on the other side, and then he dies there sad and alone. And then just like... he He's stuck in PNG mode. Whoever Whoever's just like watching it is just like, huh, stupid animal. Yeah? That would be so sad. What, what if we're all just in Bigfoot's dream right now? Whoa. And when he awakes... It just it's over. So on the subject <laughs> on the subject of wormholes, there's an Irish researcher and author named Ronan Coglin. Uh, he he acknowledges that physicists admit that there's a possibility that wormholes exist mm-hmm. and they would be like a shortcut from <clears throat> one universe to another. So if UFOs travel by these wormholes, and Bigfoot also travels through these wormholes, mm-hmm. then maybe that's why they're seen together. Maybe they're not actually related or they're mutually just, exclusive. They're carpooling together? Yeah, they just oh. happen to be, you know, crossing paths. They're using the same lane, per se. Mm-hmm. Oh. Very uh, smart on travel and gas. <laughs> I feel like we got real deep into it real fast. Yeah. I thought we were going to start we're, off slower, but then Eli like, was like, alternate dimensions! We're only 12 minutes in. We're 12 we are. minutes in. We're off the rails. The air is real thin up here. Well, you opened it up with the alternate dimension stuff, so that you threw me into you the science. The that wormhole. was you. Yeah. That was all you. you. Stefan, did you use a wormhole to get here, or did you, you said you just climbed up the other side of the mountain, right? Yeah, I just bought some really nice hiking shoes and just kind of went for it. Nice. How'd you hear about the mountain? Bigfoot Mountain? Yeah. By listening to your guys' podcast. No Whoa! Way! Did you know we was up here? I was hoping. I just haven't found you yet, but uh, I, I finally met you guys. Hey, we're right here. I finally got here. So what do you what do you think about all this interdimensional? Well, I was actually reading about something similar called the Mach Effect. Did you read about this, Jasmine? Uh, briefly. Yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty much uh, the same thing. Like NASA's still researching it. I think they started actually like going deep into it in uh, April 2017. But it's uh, so the momentary tears in the electromagnetic membrane on Earth causes a separation and like lines up parallel universes and allows people to travel through it. Whoa! <laughs> Wild. That's the plot of the Super Mario Brothers movie, too. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah. Or it's just a riff that lets, lets people go from one dimension to another. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I, I have literally nothing on other dimensions except really? for what I brought up. Just for really? Frank Beck? Yeah. Fred Beck? <laughs> <laughs> Frank Beck and his son Beck Beck. Yeah. It is a pretty a pretty intense subject to talk it, about it, other dimensions. It gets real it's sciencey. Big, it's a big wormhole to fall into. <laughs> I see what Dude. you did there. Yeah, wow. 
So I'm yeah, sorry. Eli, clearly you don't have anything else about alternate dimensions. No. Uh, Alex, Stefan, do you have anything else to add on this subject before we kind of? I would, I would guess I would say work backwards mm-hmm. to aliens. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I guess the only thing I would really have to say would be that every story I came across, the trails just end suddenly. So either they, like, that just makes the interdimensional travel make a little bit of sense to me because the trails just stop, mm-hmm. like, every single time. Mm-hmm. Uh, funny point about the interdimensional traveler type thing is, um, so John Keel, who we've talked mm. about before. Mothman yeah. prophecy. And, and, and Indrid Cold and all that. Yeah. yeah. Came from so a different dimension. Mm. Keel, Keel referred to these entities as ultra-terrestrials, mm-hmm. so capable of crossing dimensions at will often acting as cosmic pranksters. And yeah. he believes that Bigfoot is a cosmic prankster for a couple reasons. So there's always sort of a playfulness or spookiness described in their actions, you know, knocking on trees or weird noises. And then as soon as you try to get close enough to actually, like, get a glimpse... They Bigfoot, go blurry on you. Yeah, they go blurry or they vanish seemingly into thin air. Um, even their appearance could be said it could be considered another form of a prank. So like embodying a primitive ape like creature that exudes a noxious odor. Yet they're able to evade contact with us despite thousands of reported sightings over hundreds of years. So <laughs> the question in this article is, is Sasquatch cosmically trolling us? <laughs> well, he's got a different sense of humor than we do. Yeah. And same with Mothman, because if he is an interdimensional prankster, his joke on destroying the bridge did not go over very well. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, I have something else that kind of ties in with the cosmic prankster thing. Go ahead. Uh, And it goes about in a roundabout way. Um, That's that's the only way there is. That UFOs are round, I mean, you know. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. What? In most cases. It it goes back to John Green, who I brought up before. Uh, He brings up this... For a lot of Native American tribes, to see a sca- Sasquatch is to die. Yeah, it's so bad news, it's right? It's like really, it's either you're going to die or it's bad luck. Yeah. And while that hasn't necessarily been true for like a lot of people who have seen Sasquatch, they don't like die right after. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of people like it just, it's not good luck to talk about Sasquatch and like in a serious community. Okay. You know, because like, I don't know. When you talk about Sasquatch, you know, people like, okay, you believe in Sasquatch? Like, really? You believe in the beef the beef jerky mascot? Yeah, basically, you know? And just, like, a lot of people in science, like, it's taboo to talk about it in the scientific community. It's just interesting. It's still kind of crossed over, but, like, if that is a prank, it is a prank gone too far, my yeah. friend. <laughs> Bad taste. Do it for the views. <laughs> Do it for the vine. Do it for the gram. The clickbait. The interdimensional clickbait or Bigfoot. Bigfoot is a YouTuber. Oh. You even imagine. That's his prank show. He just goes around, and when people try to see him, he goes blurry. <laughs> oh, whoa. And on Bigfoot Planet, that's just like the number one hit. That's like their impractical jokers. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like six Netflix specials. And six stuff. Netflix specials. He has. He does, you know, the Apollo and... He has, like, his own streaming service where it's all just Bigfoot prank shows. He goes to Alien Worlds, freaks them out. So let's bring it back to what we kind of started off this podcast, this episode, Mm. talking about. We went real quick into the other dimension stuff. We we gotta get that out of the way, though. (laughs) I guess. So let's bring it back to the possibility that Bigfoot is an alien Mm -hmm. or travels with aliens. Okay. Um, I have... Sounds like you have the answers. Well, I have quite a few, like, bullet point stories that I think I'll kind of breeze through to kind of just give you a general idea of why these connections are made. Right. And then I have one story that goes a little bit more into detail. So, if we're going through the brief overview, uh, the first story I have is from uh, 1888. So, a cattleman describes an encounter he had with Indians in Humboldt County, California. What year? 1888. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. I, remember, I thought you said 1988, and I was like, whoa! <laughs> it's very recent. I got recent. that date wrong. And it, was, it was like the, the same, it was like a year after Predator, some cowboy was hanging out with some Indians. <laughs> so, um, these Indians led this cattleman uh, to a cave 
I don't have any information why or how this happened. If they were just like, hey, want to go to a cave? And he was like, sure. But <laughs> one way or another, they end up at a cave where they see a hefty humanoid creature covered in long, shiny black hair sitting cross-legged. Uh, and the Indians referred to this creature as one of the three crazy bears mm-hmm. that had been cast out of a small moon that had dropped from the sky and landed. So we take our modern day vocabulary and we make these assumptions that the moon must have been like a UFO, a mm-hmm. spacecraft, because it ascended back into the air. Uh, so it's, quote, highly likely that these crazy bears were really Bigfoots and the moon was a spacecraft. Mm-hmm. So and did you get where this happened? Um, Humboldt, Humboldt, County. Humboldt County. Yeah, Humboldt County. Yeah. And then an- another point relating to that, I think, also what Eli just said, to see Bigfoot is to see death. Yeah. That's what you were saying with the Native Americans. And then in the previous episode in the Battle Mountain, you said the the wounded Bigfoot responded the most to the Native American woman. Yeah. And I thought that was just kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. in every other story, uh, everyone's very scared of Bigfoot. But in this, this is the only story that the... The Indians like are not are not scared, and they yeah. just they show somebody. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was very interesting. Which is also interesting because usually the Native Americans don't want to want outsiders mm-hmm. to be a part right. of any of that. I think it's interesting the number three though, because right. I I have this uh, September nineteen seventy three, and this is a UFO hotline that we talked about mm-hmm. in the beginning. Uh, oh. They get a ring from an, an anonymous source, and that says. At a forest near Penn, is it P E N N? I'm not sure if that's short for Pennsylvania, or but Penne it's pasta. <laughs> yeah, you know one of those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the source said that there was three women driving, and they saw a landed metallic reta- rectangular UFO, and they saw three seven-foot-tall ape-like creatures that ran out and in, into the woods. Three of them. Okay. Which I think is interesting because three came from the moon. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I just, it's happening again. <laughs> Number they three. three. What does it mean? <laughs> I don't know anymore. Nothing makes sense anymore. There's a story that also came out of Ohio relating to UFO and Bigfoots. That Whoa, also... How many have you seen? Whoa. <laughs> I haven't seen any. How many grassmen uh, have you but seen? But you said the story you just said came from 1973, right? Mm-hmm. This is the same year yeah. that this story happens. 1973... I'm assuming you pronounce this name Rafa? 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 Yeah, Rafa. Yeah, Rafa. Uh, Rafa Heightfield and her 13 year old son were sleeping in their trailer in Cincinnati, Ohio on the morning of October 21st, like I said, 1973. Um, she woke up just naturally at 2 30 and decided to get a drink of water. You know how you wake up in the middle of the night sometimes. And no, as I don't. She, as, oh, oh, I'm so, I'm so, and I as, sleep during the day. <laughs> and as she went to go get this drink of water, she noticed strange lights outside in the adjoining parking lot. So she looked at her window, and then her attention was drawn to a cone of light that was shaped like a huge bubble umbrella, which was apparently seven feet in diameter. So it's like, there's this this light in the sky, this dome light, but then nearby she spotted a grayish ape-like creature with a large downward angled snout, no neck, sizable waist, moving slowly, and it entered into this cone of light, and then I d- the story says about five minutes later both the ape man and the UFO disappeared, so I don't know if that means that the ape guy was just standing in the light for five minutes or what and just slowly like, beam me up guys yeah, let's it's, go it's, we she go make herself a pot of coffee yeah. and come back and it's gone <laughs> it, took, <laughs> it took five minutes for it to slowly lift him off the ground yeah. he's a very hefty fellow yeah i don't know why that five minutes is in there but essentially <laughs> she sees the light she sees this ufo bigfoot walks into the light and then is gone yeah in five minutes yeah Five minutes or less. 1973 comes up a lot when I'm looking at this stuff. Did you guys have the one from October 25th? With them farmers? Fayette Fayette County, Pennsylvania? When when do you guys tell that? Mm -hmm. Take it away, Stefano. All right, well, I got, uh, let's see. You got that, what was the name, Penn? I got Penn. Yeah. This one is in Pennsylvania, yeah. yeah. October 25th, 1973. Oh, that's right. Did you just tell this one? My, my name is George Hen. Um, I I told a story. This is Penn. 
1973 UFO hotline got a ring. Oh, the UFO hotline, that's right. All right, well, Is this... I got one where it said somebody found saw a UFO, it says brightly lit, 100 feet in diameter, and then saw creatures covered in thick hair, green eyes, long arms extending below the knees. And then uh, he was a farmer, I believe. Yes. He was a farmer, and uh, it says he shot his uh, shotgun at it, but uh, the UFO disappeared and the monster ran off. Mm-hmm. And this was 1973? Yeah, 1973. Speaking of 1973. Oh. Oh, my gosh. I have more. 1973? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. I, I was just thinking that. <laughs> disco still <laughs> alive? Uh, UFO researcher, and we already mentioned him, but Stan Gordon. Oh. He got three reports from Union. Yep. Three? Three? Ah. Three. Three? <laughs> uh, three reports from Uniontown in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. In 1973. Pennsylvania again. Yeah, Whoa. again. And, uh, I mean, I didn't go into detail in any of these, but basically they saw large hairy hominids near UFO slash bright glowing light. Um, maybe you guys actually talked about one of those instances. I'm not sure, but that, that was interesting to me. Mm. Also, quick note, I should have brought this up in the beginning of the episode. Uh, according to a recent statistic, Washington... State is the best place to see UFOs in the United States, and it also is the number one place to see Bigfoot in the United States. Mm. It's the same state. Relevant. And you can see sparkly vampires there, too. Yep. It's got it all. Although, we're going to travel back to Pennsylvania for one more story from Jasmine. Yeah. Whoop. This one has Whoop. a little bit more detail Whoop. into Whoop. it. We travel up the blood-soaked hills of pennsylvania <laughs> why are they blood soaked because it sounds like transylvania <laughs> oh, my oh okay so lots of threes <laughs> happening lots of pennsylvania things happening mm-hmm. um this is a story that had a little bit more detail like i said earlier most of what we've mentioned so far was kind of some like quick bullet point yeah. stories to kind of understand why it's relevant so the year is 1966 mm. And we're in mm-hmm. Presque Isle State Park, which is a summer tourist destination uh, in Erie, Pennsylvania. So we've got four tourists from New York. Um, their car got stuck in the sand after they spent the day on the beach on the, pen- the peninsula. Uh, so one dude, his name's Gerald, he <laughs> leaves to go call a tow truck because, you know, their car mm-hmm. is stuck. And it just so happened that police on patrol showed up and, like, checked on them. And they were like, hey, you guys okay? And they were like, yeah, we had someone go call a tow truck. We're fine. So the police drive off. And then they come back, like, an hour later or something like that. And they're like, hey, are you still okay? And they're still waiting for their tow truck or whatever. <laughs> so the second time that the police showed up. So they strolled by the first time. And they were like, are you guys okay? They're like, yeah. And then they come by again later to check on them. And the group told them that they witnessed something weird going on up there as they pointed to the sky uh, above the wooded area. So one of the group's members, Douglas, went to investigate with the two officers to go see what this weird light shape thing Mm -hmm. in the sky was. Uh, So the two women in the group, Betty and Anita, they stayed in the car. So to... uh, <clears throat> Douglas and the officers go into the woods and they walked like 300 yards up the beach. Uh, I don't know why I've been saying woods. We're on the freaking beach. Yeah. I need to get my story straight. We're on <laughs> well, the beach. They were okay. stuck in an interdimensional border. Like, I don't know. Here, yeah. so. I've never been to Pennsylvania. Yes, I have. Oh, never mind. Whoa. I don't know what's happening. Guys. Who are you? <laughs> Caught in a web of lies. Anyways. <laughs> So they walk 300 yards up the beach before they hear the honk of the horn of the car. Uh, so it starts going crazy. And so they're like, what's going on? And so they turn back and they go back to the guard to find the girls clearly shaken. And then they talk about they witnessed a dull black shape bigger than a man, big head and shoulders, arm-like appendages, no hands, no visible face, ooh. as though it had its back turned in front of their car before it lumbered into the bushes. And then they started laying on the horn. Old Stumpy the Bigfoot with no hands. Oh. So essentially they're sitting in the car and they see this creature and they freak out mm. and they, you know, call the guys back. Um, when it comes to the creature, it ended up being dismissed by investigators as a raccoon. <laughs> even though the ladies were very distinct about Classic the description mistake. of a bipedal <laughs> humanoid figure. So but what's interesting 
there's no like quote proof. I keep saying quote a lot. Yeah. In these, in these episodes, there's no proof of the Bigfoot. There's just the eyewitness account. Mm-hmm. But there's also evidence of a UFO having landed on the beach that day. So what? The Say UFO. Who the UFO had been described as an angular craft emitting red and orange lights before descending down to the beach where it radiated this beam of white light that tracked something into the woods. But eventually it took off at incredible speed to the north shortly after the women encountered the humanoid figure. So putting these facts together, I feel like, okay, they're sitting in the car. They've seen this light in the sky. Then they see this Bigfoot. Then they see this UFO, and they're like, what the F is going on? Um, And then they got told it was just a trash panda. (laughs) Yeah. So the next morning, though, officers... Uh, patrolled the area where the craft had allegedly landed, and the reports do say that they noticed the presence of two unusual triangular marks in the area coinciding with the craft's supposed landing zone. Mm. Uh, And the officer who wrote the report, I don't have his name or her name, I don't know, Uh, but it says, I have no reasonable explanation of the UFO and described the witnesses as being credible. Uh, The investigation of the case was eventually abandoned, remaining unsolved to this day, and the Project Blue Book report dismisses the group's testimony as possibly a hoax. So, but no d- definitive conclusion uh, was ever you're, made. You're bringing up Project Blue Book? Oh. Well, what is that? I don't know. Whoa. Project Blue Book uh, is a compilation of the government looking into reported UFO yeah. sightings. Mm-hmm. I did uh, know. I just yeah. was saying. I just feigned oh. ignorance. I was passing the torch to oh, someone else Oh, because I, I didn't get an official definition. Oh. I didn't know we were going there today. Well, no, <laughs> no, we don't have to. It's just kind of a general, like, like what Alex said. It's yeah. just a right. little taste. Yeah. It's just a little taste. Just, just, yeah, just it's a, a subsidiary of Blue Bell Ice Cream. What? Project Blue Book. Blue Bell 26. Oh. What? what? Huh? So... Just like the simulations. <laughs> <laughs> so many jokes that people are not going to catch on to yes, when you listen to this. <laughs> That's what they stay for. Come for the cryptids, get the obscure references that only maybe two people listening will get. And we thank you. So, we got, uh, so Bigfoot on the beach, soaking up some rays. UFO tried to capture him. And then what happened? I don't know, man. There's so many theories regarding Bigfoot and aliens. Mm -hmm. Like, is Bigfoot an alien? We don't know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. Oh? I'll tell you what. I didn't write it down. Because I thought, I don't know what I thought, but I didn't write it down. There's this story that Lauren Coleman put into his book. Oh, speaking of Lauren Coleman. Yeah. Uh, I'll what bring about him that up. guy? He met a UFO uh, u- ufologist. Oh, ufologist. He, I was going to say, you, he met a UFO? Ufologist. He, he met ufologist Jerome Clark through our good friend John Keel. Oh. So they were, they were all in this room together talking at one point in time. But this got Lauren Coleman investigating Bigfoot UFO connections, connections, and this is he is partly responsible for the reason why people think there is so much connection between between the two. Mm-hmm. Because Lauren Coleman has denied this since <laughs> he he says yeah nah th- there's nothing there nah bro. But you know it doesn't stop people from from going away running away with it. Yeah. So he says there's. These are big speculations for very, very small evidence. Mm-hmm. And so, but he talks about in that book, uh, Bigfoot, a true story of apes in America that I've been reading this whole, this whole trip. Yeah. And I've still not finished because I've been lazy, <laughs> but, uh, there's a UFO, this family somewhere at some point in time. Oh. Fairly, <laughs> fairly recently. Some, ta- some family in any town USA, if you will. But, uh, basically it was snowing. It had snowed so hard that there was, like, a thick layer of snow, and then it froze over. Okay. And so this woman described that her husband was not able to break through the snow in the morning, but they found footprints next to the truck that were went all the way down to the gravel underneath. Mm. And there were, like, several of them. Um, later, like, a couple days later, they saw... Like, the whole family saw bright lights in the sky, mm-hmm. and they saw one of them, they they described it as tipping over sideways. 
and they saw a humanoid figure just drop out and land in the woods. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> it just fell out. They just, they literally dropped him off. Yeah, but... They try, is... they try to do, like, one of those cool drifting moves and overshot, <laughs> and the driver just fell out. <laughs> That'd be so, it's still, like, hovering up there. Yeah, it just keeps going. He, like, he can't get back. Ah, oh, my car! <laughs> but, um... After that, they were experiencing uh, strange things like encounters around the house. Mm. And, like things were jumping on the roof, Ooh. things were knocking on the doors, knocking on the windows. Um, and I don't think they ever had any like one-on-one interactions besides like all those things. But uh, we don't really know what it is. Yeah. But that's interesting because it's hominid. the The size of the footprints, I didn't bring it up, but they match. The regular size of book Bigfoot footprints, mm-hmm. like being like I think they said they were seventeen inches long and like six inches wide, totally fits. Where'd you get this story? Uh, from the book Lauren Coleman, uh, Bigfoot, the true story of apes in America. Oh, okay, and chapter really, twelve. It was just an unnamed family. Uh, they have they have a name. Oh, okay, I just don't know the name. Oh, okay. I I like I said I didn't write it down, but it it's chapter twelve of that book. We'll call them the Snookum family. And and support your cryptozoologist. Buy that book. Buy it. Buy my book. It's not mine. Oh. <laughs> we'll just slap Cryptic Campfire on the title. What? <laughs> Resell it and make a profit. Just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's about all I got, though. Do I don't you, know. Do you think Bigfoot fights aliens? Well... I don't know if he fights them, but I feel like one of the one of the possibilities is that he's being punished by them. Oh, what? There, there is a theory that the connection between UFOs and aliens is that Earth is an exile oh. for Bigfoot, and so they are sent here as like a prison, Whoa. like they're criminals. We're prison like Bigfoot planet. are criminals. That ain't the first time it's happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. What if all cryptids were just like criminals oh, dude. from like whatever planet dimension they were from they're like you know what that earth's kind of a dump go send them. you're gonna be stuck here so wait so after that the huts are done using the wookies as uh slaves on to, uh, kessel they just drop mine. them off on earth yeah so, so they can stop mining the um the calaxium yeah darn sucks to suck <laughs> <laughs> it's rough man we gotta free those wookies it's crazy, too, because uh, I know me and Eli have talked about this. There's a Star Wars comic book, I believe, where Han Solo and Chewbacca get stuck through a wormhole and crash land in the North Pacific Northwest, mm-hmm. and Han Solo passes away from the crash, and Chewbacca becomes the uh, Bigfoot, and then Indiana Jones finds his finds Han Solo's remains. Yeah. That should be in episode nine. <laughs> that should be in episode yeah. nine? Han Solo's already dead, dude. <laughs> Spoiler! I, the movie's four years old at this point. He uh, he got ca- he didn't die at the bottom of the shaft. He had, when he fell down the shaft, he fell through the wormhole. Yeah, he just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> he falls from the he, sky. He, he fell through like a Doctor Who wormhole. Ooh. Just like gets impaled on a tree <laughs> as he's falling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, if we want to get really weird, I read I yeah, read let's get this. Freaky. Okay, let's, yeah. well this this one can is a little controversial just because it has a lot to do with religion oh. and like creation and stuff like that. I'm not going to comment on what I think about it. I'm yeah. just going to say it. Okay. Um, Swiss author Eric von Daniken, who is often interviewed for the History Channel's program Ancient Aliens. Okay, very uh, credible. He has said that humankind is a product of alien bioengineering. Uh-huh. So if we go with that, then there's the possibility that Bigfoot could also be another alien-spawned early ancestor of humankind, perhaps an experiment gone wrong. So there's a bunch of crazy stuff happening with aliens. I mean, even the fact that we're talking about aliens, like, aliens in itself is, like, a crazy subject. It yeah. is. And now we're combining the two of them and trying to find connections. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe we're the products of aliens getting on with early hominids. Oh dear. In the prehistoric oh, times. Oh, I sent that meme, didn't I? Yeah. I, yeah. One? There's a meme where like the caption is like, 
y'all ain't ready to talk, y'all ain't ready to talk about this one. And it's like a picture of an alien and an ape who, who are like, look like a couple <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah. holding, they're holding a human baby. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. the crossbreeding that we were talking about in the government yeah. cover up episode. Yeah. Those aliens beat caveman cheeks. <laughs> But I will bring this up from my previous uh, foray into UFOs. Okay. Uh, there's a report that a lot of uh, extraterrestrials do not have any genitalia. Oh. It's interesting because a lot of cryptids are known for their genitalia. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> but, like, that's what everyone notices, apparently, when we're seeing the sightings. But I mean, it, that it could be a reason why they're taking people and combining them. Yeah, I mean... And as, trying to make alien-human hybrids. And if there's one thing we know, Bigfoot, they got the genitalia. <laughs> yeah, they sure. got to fluff it in the wind. <laughs> well, but there's... I, 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 was, oh, I was just going to say real quick, ahead. going back to the idea that maybe we're the product of human experimentation, maybe Bigfoots are like alien pets. Like, they're the dogs for aliens. <laughs> well, they, they already got the chupacabras, dude. You, you can have one, one or the other. Well, chupacabras are more like cats. Chupacabras are like oh no, uh, big chupacabras are like cats and bigfoots are like uh, Great Danes mixed with like uh, a shepherd dog, <laughs> just a big woolly animal running around, a little See, bit of golden this, retriever in there. This is why it's not true because there's no actual parallel. The chupacabra could be alien human alien human hybrid pet, but a bigfoot is not, my friend. And what if melon heads are like half human, half melons? I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> you cut them in half and it's just like watermelon <laughs> seeds. Water, it's a brain watermelon? that has watermelon seeds in it. I was thinking it. lemon. Ooh, lemon heads. Oh, they're all citrusy and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you punch one, it just shoots lemon juice everywhere. They got citrus all over those blue granada seeds. Oh, no. <laughs> now they can't get the warranty. <laughs> well, there's also the possibility that there is no real connection of Bigfoot to aliens, and that aliens are just... You could say we're just grasping at straws. Well, what are you there's to a... say here? What I'm trying to say is maybe aliens are abducting Bigfoot the same way that they're abducting humans. Like, maybe the Bigfoot are just the innocent bystanders in this who I, just happen yeah. to get beamed up. I mean, because there, there could be no connection, you know, because sometimes, you know, a lot of people will try to find connection to things that aren't there. Mm -hmm. They'll try to find details and facts... You know, I have a friend who does this all the time. I'm always just like, his name's Brad. I'm like, Brad, let's not kid ourselves. Your photos are nothing, but you keep spending all this time on them. <laughs> oh, good old Brad. Are you so, talking about, like, investigation photos? Like, Yeah. Uh, and a friend of mine, he posts a lot of photos of uh, Bigfoot activity, and there, there's just nothing there. It's gotcha. just shadows on leaves. I gotcha. So he's just kidding himself at this point. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh, uh, no one will ever understand that. <laughs> I understand. I get what you're saying. I think. You, I think you do. I yeah. think I do. But, uh... Oh, oh, wow. How far in are we? Where are we at time-wise? 42 minutes. Oh. We're getting there. Oh. What What do you guys think would happen if a Bigfoot fought a predator? Who would win? <laughs> Bigfoot, dude. Yeah? You think so? He can uproot trees. Oh. And but then the predator can shoot his blade through trees. Yeah, he's got heat vision. He's got heat vision. He's got the shoulder cannon. Dude, Bigfoot can cover himself in mud. Oh! And make a bunch of booby traps. Uh, just picture instead of Arnold, it's just Bigfoot mud and just starts doing Sierra sounds. <laughs> <laughs> just echoes through the forest. Come on! Oh, God. Do it. I'm right here. Do it. Do it now. Harry and the Hendersons. Harry fights a predator, and then just out of nowhere, all the pre all the Bigfoots come out of the trees and gang up on the predator. <laughs> played by the same guy too. I know. The guy he, who played he, Harry played Predator. You mentioned that, uh, however many episodes ago. Yeah. I'd... Yeah. Uh, I think we are we at the top. Did we make it? I think we're. I think uh, we're done. I, I think we've exhausted yeah. this crazy conspiracy uh, of I, alien connections with Bigfoot. Yeah, it's all true, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a weird end to our journey. We didn't exactly. It was. It's a very strange we, connection. Yeah, but. we we set off to climb Bigfoot uh, Bigfoot Mountain, try to figure out. That's what... why the government's trying to cover it up. Oh, because. Bigfoot is working with the aliens. Whoa. Okay. 
You ever think Bigfoot's been in Area 51? Yeah. You ready yeah. to storm oh, yeah. that? It's all true. Yeah. You ready to storm that, sucker? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be there. Naruto <laughs> run. Naruto <laughs> run. <laughs> We're putting all the Kyles in the front. Yeah. <laughs> and telling them all the walls are made out of... Uh, the, what the, are we? Drywall. Drywall. We're they giving got, them all Monster Energy drinks. Yeah. Listen, Area 51 has a perpetual monster making drink fountain. <laughs> it's behind seven layers of drywall. <laughs> we need all the Kyles we can get. Well, it has been quite the journey. I yeah. think we have exhausted Bigfoot. We made a new friend on the way yeah. on our journey up here. It's nice to meet you, Stefan. Pleasure is all mine. We laughed. We learned. We cried, we hallucinated. starved a little bit, hallucinated, Oof. Stuff, suffered heat stroke for a while. I think I am done with Bigfoot for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he's a great guy, but, you know, I think I need to take some time away. Yeah. So, kind of uh, get our noses out of the books, go into the field sometime, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, you, where, where can I find you, my friend? If you want to find me on the social media platforms, uh, I'm on Twitter on and Instagram at Alex Daikaiju. That's Alex, D-A-I-K-A-I-J-U. Uh, I've been drawing a lot of the cryptids we've talked about on my Instagram, so go ahead and check those out. I'm really happy with, you know, what we've come up with. Uh, I also run the uh, Cryptid Campfire Twitter with Jasmine. Mm -hmm. uh, we take turns kind of posting info. And if I wanted to find Jasmine herself on social media. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. My username is the same on both platforms. It's just my name, Jasmine May with. J A S M I N E M A E W I T H. What about you, fella? You can find me at uh, at Cryptid Campfire on Instagram, the official Cryptid Campfire page. I run it. Feel free to DM me. Okay, I gotta I gotta yeah. say something though. Uh. <laughs> Do not DM me with a post. <sighs> Don't send me stuff to post. Don't kid. Don't do that. Don't send us your Fortnite player scores. Don't do that either. Don't, don't tell us how many drywalls you've punched while drinking Monster and playing Fortnite. <laughs> if you get enough of those messages, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, new well, guys, yeah, Stefan. You? We're, we're yeah, up, introduce I'm, yourself. I'm off the grid. Oh Whoa. God. Whoa. I uh, my name's Stefan Myers. You can find me on Instagram at Myers Stefan. That's M Y E R S S T E F F E N. Dope. Interesting. All right. Yeah. So I think it's been great. We'll start cleaning up our mess. What the hell is that? Oh, my Whoa. gosh. What oh in the... My. Shut it's... up. Is that freaking Bigfoot? Dude, we got to get him. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Interview. 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 Do you have time? Oh, my gosh. This is not happening. I cannot Whoa. believe this. He's here, dude. Oh, it's my like... God, you guys. No joke. Bigfoot is literally right here. Holy it's crap. like something out of a Frank Black song. Are we incredible. hallucinating? Is this real right now? Because I'm... About to lose my mind. I don't know. We're going to ask him some questions. All quick, right. Uh, quick take it. Can, uh, I don't know if you understand English, but can you like sit? Can you just like sit right here next to the campfire? <laughs> awesome. Guys, right. what do we do? Got to channel it. All uh, right. So, uh, how are you today, uh, Mr. Bigfoot? Mr. Foot? Mr. Big? Yeah. Oh, All right, cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, All I'm right. glad. I'm glad to hear that. You know, Thank you for taking time with us. Uh, I think we have a couple questions, if you don't mind. Did you want any coffee, by the way? Stefan brought some. Um... Delicious coffee, I must say. 100% Colombian. Great stuff. <laughs> uh, so, did, do you know Patty from the Patterson Gimlet film? What's she like? <laughs> yeah. Wow. All she right, does a lot yeah. of charity work? That's awesome. I would have never thought that. <laughs> Sh shampoo. What kind of shampoo do you use? <laughs> Oh, doesn't agree with head and shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, what about what's up with the dog man though? For real? Yeah, you gotta what's tell up? us. Oh, what, what are you doing? Wait, no, what did you? Why is he running away? Oh, oh dude, I guess that was a touchy subject. Ooh, damn. Well, uh, we got to see Bigfoot. Uh, no one's ever gonna believe us though because nobody decided to take out their camera. Oh, he oh, kept moving no. everywhere. He was super blurry. We got uh we got audio sounds though. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Analyze that. Uh, what's that? There's a... Are you guys seeing that in the sky right now? It's getting bigger. It's coming at oh full force. Oh my god. Ah! 